Hello and welcome everyone. I am Linda Israel and thank you so very much for being here at my live stream on YouTube. I go live every Monday at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time unless I'm on vacation or something else comes up but generally I'm live or I have a premiere video that you can come and watch. If you're watching this as a replay after the live stream has ended and you're on a computer, you can look for the little gear at the bottom of the screen and change the speed. If you're on a mobile device, generally the little three little dots at the top, you can use those to change the playback speed to get through a little faster because generally my live streams last around two to two and a half hours. I want to thank Robin for being my moderator and administrator and note taker throughout the live stream. She is generally my one uh, right hand woman, if you will, and I am so thankful to have her. She also is an administrator of the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. Occasionally, if she's not available, one of the other administrators will come over and help me or a friend will help me moderate the video today. If you have questions, please feel free to put those in all caps and I'll do my best to answer those questions. If I don't see it, please ask again. Or if you know the answer to somebody's question, please answer it. Hey, if you have a YouTube channel, please feel free to share with us by saying, hey, I have a YouTube channel and this is what I do on it. You won't be able to share a link, but you can at least talk about your YouTube channel. Let's keep the chat upbeat, friendly, and helpful. If you are having a great day, let us know. But honestly, we don't want the negative what is going on in the world right now because we are here to escape that, to be inspired, to be friendly, and have some fun. During the live stream, you have an opportunity to earn junk bucks. You can type exclamation point bucks to see how many that you have once Junkie Joe is up, because this is preliminary and I've pre-recorded this. Once you have 2,000 junk bucks, you can redeem those by typing a ward and you can get a $10 off coupon to my shop. How do you earn junk bucks? Just by being here, chatting with us. So make sure that you speak up in the chat so that Junkie Joe registers that you're here and by playing the in chat games and then also whenever you make donations. Occasionally I have raffles. In fact, right now there should be Junkie Joe coming up. You can type exclamation point raffle just as that says and you can enter the raffle to win 200 junk bucks. If you make a donation during my live stream, do go over to my website at lindaisrael.com. You can see the name scrolling across the bottom here and create a user user account. Once you've created a user account on my website, make sure that you use the contact me form and say, hey, my name is on YouTube and I donated. And then I can get you added to the YouTube donator membership on my website. What does that do? Well, a member of my website in the YouTube donator membership gets 5% off orders in my shop, gets several digital downloads for free, and during the live stream, when you donate, you get a chance to win the journal that I raffle off at the very end. Throughout the live stream, I will have different raffles giving away prizes. If you will type exclamation point raffle when you see those come up, then you can have a chance to win those items. We're going to get started here in just a moment. Thank you so much for being here today. When the video is over, come back and leave a comment. Tell me what you liked about today's video, or if you have questions and you're watching this as a replay, use that comment section down below. Also look in the description box to links to the Friendly Junk Journal paper, People Facebook group, as well as by Linda Israel, my Instagram, Twitter, my website, and generally I try to update the products that I use and those links are in the description box as well. All right, well, let's get started.
Hello, 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 everyone. Hello, how are you? So glad to have you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so how is everybody? Y'all having a good week or did you have a eventful weekend or was it pretty calm and nonchalant? Mine was a little busy. We had to do some work at the shop and oh, it's just one thing after another, it seems like, doesn't it? <laughs> so glad to have y'all here today. Hey, if you haven't already shared this video with your friends so they can check it out as well. Today I thought I would use some mixed media techniques to make some pretty papers and then I have some blanks that we can use to make a couple of journals. So for example, this was made out of a six by six square of scrapbook cardstock and then I added my mixed media pieces. Oh, I didn't, didn't bind it. Oh well, I don't think you have to see me bind every single thing. And then I just put this ribbon around it. The inside pages are just some random papers that I had. Hey, Jennifer, how are you? Oh, thank you, Robin. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, that's awesome. You got to see grandkids. Uh, this one, I had a scrap of this watercolor paper, and I had this scrap of cardstock that I put as a cover, and then I had a few scraps of paper laying here on my desk, so I just made it kind of a long, skinny little journal. And then this is using some of that watercolor paper. That's where this scrap came off of. It was actually on the end of that because this was a 12 by 12 piece. And then I just had some random text weight papers that I had in my stash and I painted and layered and whatnot. So let's kind of get started here. Good times, good times. Um, Last week I showed y'all the technique where I stamped and then watercolored around the images on the images. In fact, this is one that we made last week where I just did some stenciling and stamping. So I thought I'd kind of show you a little bit more of this because it's a great way to use up those book pages. So I went ahead before the live and I painted this book page with some white acrylic craft paint, which is laying here. I found, I was just curling this over the edge of my desk. So I've got some Anita's all purpose white acrylic craft paint. And I just used an old gift card and just smeared it all over my book page. Let that dry. And then I've got a couple of rubber stamps here that I think I want to use. And I made masks. So what is a mask? It's where you fussy cut a stamped image. It looks like a couple of them have fallen off my sheet. Um, and I put a little bit of zig two-way glue on the back of it. So this one has got a little bit of zig two-way glue. I just kind of make an X across the back. And then I come in here. And if you can fussy cut this really close on that line, then you'll get a really good mask that you can use, which will be important here in just a moment. So just really get close to that. And then once you've done that, you're ready to get started. So I'm gonna use the same flower and I've stamped some dragonflies, bees, and butterflies. So I'm gonna lay this out here and decide what critter do I want to use first? And I'm thinking maybe I'll use, I did the butterfly. But let's do the bee. So I've got a little bee here. I'm going to put that on my acrylic stamp block. This is B number one. I've got some new flower rubber stamps that I have not um, put on my website yet because I just made them this past weekend. So I've got this lily-like flower, uh, anemone, 
a sketched daisy, a geranium. Those are new. And this one is, I haven't decided if I'm going to put it up there, but I had made it a while back. And this is a carnation. I was trying to decide if I wanted to do the monthly flowers and I was playing around with sizes. And then I have this flower swag up here. But uh, Thank you, Margie, for your donation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I've got this little bee, little tiny bee. Move this over here. So I'm going to stamp the B a few times randomly all over this paper. Thank you so much, Margie, for your donation. I greatly appreciate it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go like this and then kind of rotate it. And remember when you're doing stamping, you love the carnations. Oh, well, good. I'm going to get that, get that added. And then I'm going to rotate it. Stamp straight down. Don't wobble your stamp. Let it sink into the paper. Let that ink grab on to your paper. Kind of rotating it this way and that. Go close to the edge if you like. Try to do this this way. And maybe let's put one going that way. So just kind of putting bees all over the place. I may add one more over there. Oh, I got the hiccups all of a sudden. Okay. I held my breath for a moment. <laughs> Monthly flower stamp club. Okay, gotcha. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so I got the bees put down. So now what I'm going to do is my fussy cut bees that I made earlier. I just put a little bit of that Zig 2A glue on there. You don't go and do each individual piece because if you do, when you go to lift it off, those little legs will stick to your paper and it'll tear. So just only do the body portion of your critter or flower or whatever it is that you want to mask. I haven't done a lot of masking here lately. It, this is something or a technique that I used to do a lot of whenever I was making handmade greeting cards. All right, grab some more bees. And I think the next time that I do little fussy cuts like this, I'm going to use a different color of paper than white <laughs> because it's kind of hard to see the bees or other uh, paper pieces that you've worked on if it's the same color as your substrate that you're working on. All right, make sure I've got this on here nice and neat. Got that one. Got a couple more here. And I like putting it on this transparency film. I don't know if I explained that. Uh, I have a bunch of this transparency film. You may have a page protector or a journal page protector that goes to a scrapbook. And you could use those or you can use some packaging to store your fussy cut elements. And I do recommend that you save them because once you've done the work once you don't have to keep doing it over and over and over all right so now i've got the bees the bees knees they're everywhere i think this one is not on there straight let's get him straight i want my flower so here is my little daisy flower and i'm going to grab a piece of paper so I don't get ink on my craft mat here. This one's not straight either. Come on now. You cooperate. You do what I want you to do. All right, so now what I'm going to do is stamp this flower in and around the bees. Oh, 
What do you think so far? All right, so I've got that stamped out. So now I'm going to come back in. Oh, yeah, I saw that, Jennifer, that you were going to work on another bee journal. I'm glad you found supplies so you could make a second one. All right, so now I'm just going to come back in with my masks again and lay these all out on top of the flowers because I want to also stamp leaves behind everything. I'm trying to look at how I've got this flower uh, image, which way it goes, which is the right orientation of it to cover it up. Stamping away. Hello, Ada. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad you're here. Hello, hello, hello. All right, so I'm just placing my masks over the stamped images. Oops, let me get this lined up. Got a couple more here. I think we've got three more. One, two. Do, 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 do. And the last one. Okay. Move my out of the way. And then I'm going to get the little leaves. Uh, this little leaf stamp has a little bit of a stem. So when I stamp this, I'm going to try to stamp it to where that portion is hidden behind another image. Okay. So I'll come in here like so. If you feel like you need another image, like right there could be another flower. So since I've got all the masks down, I'll go ahead and stamp this one and cover it up so that when I go to do the leaves, I don't end up messing up that image. Okay, that works. So I'll kind of have that coming out, let's say this way and maybe this way. So it looks like the leaves are just kind of peeking out behind each flower. Maybe off the page a little bit. You can leave a little bit of white space, of course. This is one of these techniques that you could just sit here and play and play. And I think it would be fun to make pages up like this. And I have already done a few where I scanned in the stamped page. And then that way, if I want to recreate it, but do it in a different color, I already have the stamped portion done. I didn't put a mask over that one, but I think I can get away with putting this down right now so that I can get this leaf in here and then making it kind of like coloring book pages because once you've stamped this you scanned it into your computer then you can use it over and over now you are allowed to scan the rubber stamps from me you are not allowed to sell the digital file you can sell a handmade item meaning you st stamped it you scanned it and then you printed it out and you use that new piece of printed work to make something. All right, let's get this out of the way. So I think I've got all the stamping done. I've gone all the way around. Hey, April. So now I'm just going to come in here and pick up my flowers off my page. 
And this again is why it's important not to put the tacky glue over the whole image. You just want it enough to help hold it into place. And if it lose its tackiness, it's not as sticky, then just turn them over where you have the back side up and add a little bit more of that zig two-way glue on them. And that will take care of your non-sticky issue. Once they're air dry, then you can put them back on your little storage sheet. I thought it was pretty clever making my little storage sheet. I taped two pieces of acetate to a piece of text weight paper so I have like a little booklet that I can keep these in and my thought was if I could keep this nice and neat I can put it inside where I keep my rubber stamps because I use little pouches and then that way when I'm ready to do this again I have all these images already fussy cut out okay Sticking the bees back down. Okay. I think I've got one more. There it is. One last bee. All right, I'm just checking. All right, see how that looks just like that? Before you even add any color to it, it's still pretty. You know, if maybe you're working on a rather monotone color and you just want to use one color in a sense, you could do black and white, and this would be a way to make your own images. You could also just come in and do one color on here to make them pop. And then here's my little folder that I made, and I'll just close that over on itself. And then I have a pouch. Where'd it go? I just had a pouch. Got a little pouch. So here's my rubber stamps. So I would take both of these pieces and then put them in my little pouch. And so they're all stored together, ready to go. Okay. Thank you, Jennifer, for your support. Thank you, Margie. I greatly appreciate it. Thank y'all for being here. Thank you, Ada and April and Robin. All right. So at this point, you could scan this in so that you have something to work with later if you want. I'm going to go ahead and use some watercolor paints. So I've got a watercolor palette. I just did a review on how to use this and where it came from on Amazon. Um, I like it so far. I paid less than 20 bucks for it. I'm gonna spray it with some water. This was a technique that I learned from Andrea Nelson, and she does watercolors, and I love her work. And it's kind of handy to be able to just spray that with water while it activates. So what colors do we want to use for our flowers today? I made some earlier, so I've got a blue with a purple dragonfly. I have a purple flower with a blue butterfly. And then I have a purple centered white daisy with the bees. So what colors do you think we should use for this one? I need to clean my hands. Okay. All right, get my brush wet. I've got a few colors in my little palette here, but I'm gonna clean one out. And I don't think I want the gray, so I'm gonna get rid of that gray. Pink, pink, pink. April says pink, pink, pink. Pink, pink, pink. All right, let me get the, let me fill this with some water. All right, let's see what shade of pink. I've got a, they're calling it pink. It kind of looks almost a neon pink. So let's see how that looks. 
So I'll kind of add it to my palette here. This will water it down so it won't be quite so vivid. And I'm going to add a little bit more water because I know I'll need a lot for the flowers. All right. That's a nice vivid pink. Pink, yellow, pink. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's go in here and I'm just going to come in here and loosely paint the flower petals. I'm okay if it's not perfect. I'm gonna come back and add another layer on it. So it's okay that if this first layer doesn't really get a lot of coating. Can you see that? Let me zoom in. You like that? Okay, good. Let's see, let's go here. Zoom, 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 zoom. Oh, that's the sewing cam. What happened? Oh, there it is. <laughs> it switched on me. <sighs> okay. Come on, computer. All right, it's thinking. So as long as we're on the screen. So I'm just going to come in here and add a little bit of pink. First, then we can put yellow in the center. Oh, there's a B I forgot. Or his leg. Oh, it was his leg. Leg down. <laughs> Junkie Joe doesn't want you to survive. This is also one of these that I uh, can spend some time watercoloring it and then come back in with some pencils and add a little bit more depth and texture to the pieces. You could spend a lot of time on each one of these. I've got a little B leg. B leg. Okay. Come back up here. We are denied. <laughs> oh dear. So y'all have a good week. Like I said, I was busy. We um my workshop that I had several people that told me they were coming the day of and the day before I got messages from every single one of them that they weren't going to be able to make it. I had one gal, she had just gotten out of the ER. Another one had family. Another one had a family, another family event. I was trying to like, oh my gosh, <laughs> it just went one right after the other. I was like, oh well. So I went up to the shop anyway, because we're getting a new piece of equipment at the shop and we needed to clear a space for it to go. So we ended up working on basically two rooms at our shop one is kind of a storage area that has stuff in it so we had to rearrange and we got that all rearranged and then we had to move a piece of equipment that we don't use anymore but we don't want to throw it away because it's worth money if somebody wants it so i helped henry move that and then we got the a space clean i swept and got that all ready and our new piece of equipment arrived today. So tomorrow I get to set it all up, make sure it's connected to our computer and start using it. And yesterday I spent a little bit of time watercoloring painted papers because I wanted to see what else I could do. And I made a few little painty papers yesterday. And then I made some journals and I was like, oh, well, let's just do the mini journals. We'll do marvelous mixed media mini journals. <laughs> There's some alliteration for you. <laughs> oh, dear. <sighs> well, at least he does his job, Julie. He cleans up after himself. 
It's a pale, pale pink. Okay, we're getting there. It can take a little bit of time doing some painting like this, but it's also one of these techniques that you can relax a little bit and just take your time and have fun with it. I think all too often we're really rushed to take care of business, so to speak, that we don't slow down for a moment and just enjoy the process of making art. Okay. All right, there is that part. And I know it looks rather washed out on the screen, but it is a brighter pink in person. I'm going to touch up a couple of spots and then I'll grab my heat tool and dry it so we can move on to the next color. I'm kind of thinking that maybe I'll use an orangey yellow for the centers of the flowers and then make the background a golden yellow behind the flowers. All right, let's get one up here. If the water is pooling up and you don't like the way it looks, you can grab a paper towel. If it left a little bit of a mark, add some water and then lift it with a paper towel. It's kind of why I'm liking the watercolors are kind of fun to play with. Hey, Rhonda, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so I'm gonna get my metal plate pan, where'd it go? I know I have another one of these somewhere. All right, so I'm going to lay a couple of pieces of paper in the bottom of it so it doesn't flash out too much. And lay this in. I got a little run right here, so I'm going to pick that up. And you probably can't see it, but there's a little bit of water that ran with the pink. So I'm just kind of lifting it up a little bit. All right, let's dry this real fast. The paper that I'm using is a book page, Ada. It's a book page that I painted with acrylic paint. So here is the book page. I guess I could zoom back out so you could see better. It was a book page from a Don Quixote in Spanish and I just painted it with white acrylic craft paint to knock back the text. You can see the text a little bit behind there. So it's a good way to use up those book pages that you probably have an abundance of, or your junk mail. It, you know, it's not real pretty. It's just text weight paper. Paint it with some acrylic paint and then just paint over it. Okay, I think I got that pretty much dry. So I'm going to clean my brush. And let's see. I think I want to do kind of an orange. So I'm going to clean this one out, add some water here, and add a little bit of orange to that. Maybe just a touch of yellow. All right, then my thought was I would just come in here and just add a little bit of that to the centers of each flower. All 
kind of gone off page there. Oh my gosh, Junkie Joe just doesn't want y'all to win. <laughs> All right, I'm just kind of touching the paint where it ran too far from my center. Do this one. Give that a moment to soak in, clean my brush off. All right, so while that's drying, I want to make a yellow in the B. I've got raw ochre here, so I think it's going to be a different shade of yellow. So when I get that wet and add a little bit to my palette here, yeah, that's a light shade. Grab a little bit more color. All right, now I'm going to do the bees. So I'm just going to go right down the bodies of the bees. Just adding a little bit of color there. I think we'll use some iridescent on their wings from the metallic uh, palette that I have here. All right, so I'm going to dry this because I don't want that yellow paint to run. You like this technique? Okay, good. I mean, it's an easy technique once you get started. Go through your stamps and figure out what can you use. Maybe you're going to use watch faces. Maybe you're going to use people's heads. You know, maybe you've got automobiles, whatever it may be. trying to pick up some of that excess water. All right, so the bees are starting to show up a little bit with a little bit of yellow. All righty, so let's do the green. I already have a green that I started that I like, so I'm just going to add a little bit more water to it and rotate it around so I can get to it easier. And I started with an olive green, was one of the greens I used. So I think I'm, I'm going to kind of take this back to more olive green this time. All right, so now I'm just going to come in here and watercolor the leaves. I, could, I've, I sat here earlier today and I painted a couple of pages and I'm like, this is just one of these fun little activities that you can just sit here and piddle with for, a, for hour. <laughs> hours and hours and hours if you so choose. <laughs> Trying to move this up so y'all can see when I get down here in this corner. And I'm okay if it kind of is thicker in some areas and thinner in other because you know your leaves are going to be dipping in and out of light and if you're something that you don't like then just daub at it with the paper towel how many of y'all have watercolor paints i didn't have very many i had a couple of little sets that i picked up when they were on clearance at 
Michael's, I think, or Tuesday morning even. And I have a really, 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 really cheap set that I bought many, many years ago, but I didn't really like the colors in it, in that palette. But I'm liking this palette with all these half pans. They're not even half pans. I think they're quarter pans because a half pan is bigger than those. But it's 50 colors, so I have lots of colors to choose from. And I can mix colors from those colors. If you don't have watercolor paints, but you do have some acrylic paint, you can basically just make a little paint palette and add water to it, and that'll dilute it down a little bit. Okay, getting around here. I hear my dog behind me snoring. Must be a rough life to be a dog. Okay, go right here. I like it. All right, we're going to dry this, and I think what I want to do is put a yellow behind the flowers because she said pink and yellow. I like it. I'm just kind of touching up where I feel I need a little bit more green. All right, clean the brush. And let's dry this. Oh no! That's a little rough. Hey, Julie. Yours is asleep. He's so tired. I know they're funny little critters. He's curled up behind me. What are you doing? Did I wake you up? Hi, Hercules. <laughs> I covered him up. <laughs> He's looking at me like, what are you doing? I'm just kind of picking up some of the excess paint where it hasn't quite dried yet. So it'll help speed that drying process up. Welcome back, welcome back. You really want it dry before you start putting down your background because the background can bleed into anywhere that's wet. That's why I'm making sure that that's very dry. I've got a yellow that I started earlier. And I'm just going to add some water to it. I need to get a pipette. I know I have some. I just don't remember where they are. I had a bunch of them. All right, so now I'm going to get a, let's just get this lighter yellow here. Oh, you can't see. There's a yellow here, real pale yellow. And I'm just going to add that in there. Adding some yellow. Okay. There we go. That makes it really a pale yellow. A hot sunny day. All right, let's move this out of the way. And I keep laying this on the tray. If I get it, the tray away, that helps. Okay, 
So now I'm going to come in here and then just loosely watercolor the background around all the flowers and the leaves and the bees. I like it. I did move, I have an old laser jet printer. I need to buy a new toner for it, but that's 200 and something dollars. I added it to my Amazon wish list. <laughs> it's like, well, we'll wait a little bit, but I brought it into my studio space so that I could use the scanner. I have been wanting to be able to scan some things, but the printer was in the other room the living room area and I was like I need to make a space in here so last night when I couldn't sleep I got up once and I rearranged a bunch of things and moved some boxes around and got rid of some boxes of stuff and made them into baskets or made the basket into a box or some things I put into Ziploc bags so I could go through them and use them as you know, a inspiration to make a journal or to make journal cards or something like that with it. Apparently I have a bunch of these random Ziploc bags full of things that I need to do something with. So I feel like I've accomplished a little bit of something because I got the printer in here. And now I've just got to order some more ink because my thought was too, like this technique on the laser printer, I could print that onto a piece of watercolor paper. And because it's a laser, the ink will be set and it won't bleed like my inkjet printer would. Now, if I wanted to, I would print on my inkjet printer and then let it air dry because inkjet is wet and then spray it with a workable fixative, a spray fixative, a sealant, which would seal the inkjet that was printed on the paper. And then when I go to watercolor over it, it shouldn't move. At least that's what I've done in the past and seemed to work for me. I kind of like the way this yellow is looking. Random thoughts. What do you think? I like it. Some areas will be a little darker than some. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you like them. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm just trying to fill in wherever I see a, a somewhat white space. over here a little bit all right did I get it all like y'all gonna be able to tell hey if you're watching this video make sure that you uh, change the uh, resolution settings to the higher resolution and it'll be nice crisp and clear now if you're using data to watch me you don't want to do that because it makes your data go up because it's streaming it at such a large um, resolution for the video but if you're on like Wi-Fi then you don't have to worry about your data usage you can turn it up so to speak so you can have a little better resolution 
All right, I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna dry, wash my brush and dry my paper. Yeah, we're gonna do the bees next. I'm gonna add some metallic paints. Thank you, Suzanne, thank you. All right, and drink a tea. I think we're getting there. Oh, there's a couple of spots there. Okay. Awesome. Giving it a good once over. All right. Move this over here. I'm going to move my palette out of the way for a minute. And then I've got a metallic palette. And I think what I want to do is use some of the gold. So I'm going to clean my brush out real good. Make sure I don't have any other color in it. And then pick up some of this gold metallic here. Now, do I want to use across the wing and the body? I think that's what I did here. I did. I put a little bit of the gold across the wings. Can you see that? And then down the body just a little bit so that they kind of stick out. So let's see how this looks. Go over here. the layers of the watercolor by putting a little bit on their body first and then coming back in with the metallic should help it stand out a little better. Okay. And I think I got all the bees Clean my brush. And let's get my tray back out. And let's dry this. Just trying to pick up some of that excess moisture. Okay, that's looking pretty good. You see the bees kind of shimmer? I am going to make a mess here soon. I keep hitting my water bottle. It's too close. All right, so I've cleaned out my brush. What color next? I have a pale pink in this metallics. Let's see how it looks. If we just kind of touch it to, it's just going to add a little bit of shimmer. It's not much difference in color, but there'll be shimmer now on the flowers. I could also use um, Tattered Angels. Dip your paintbrush into the tattered angels. I've shown that technique several times in the past of how to use tattered angels to paint. I 
Well, the bees are still there. I mean, I'll make the flowers a little darker by putting the metallic on it, I think. Come in here. Okay, add some more water. Give it some shimmer. I think I'm going to want to scan this one in so I can use it again because I like the way this one turned out. So one thing about doing videos and recording stuff when you make it, you can always go back and watch it again so you know what colors you used or what products you used in order to get the same result. Okay. Little pink shimmer. I didn't say at the beginning, but this book page measures approximately nine and a half inches by six and a quarter inches in size. Um, I just like sometimes using a little bit larger than a tiny book, if you will, for this type of techniques technique because I get a little bit more uh, pattern out of it. But if you have smaller book pages, this is also would be a good way to use those up. You could do each one in a different color scheme. All right, so there is the metallic and that's starting to shimmer. Can you see that going back and forth? All right, let's clean off the brush. Let's dry this. And then I think I need to touch up the leaves with the metallic. I mean, why not? We're putting metallic on all the others. All right, what time is it? 4.38. I like it. Loverly. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if I got it dry. A couple spots right there. All right, let's do the green. So, pick a little bit of green. This metallic green is really pretty too. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of make a few swipes here and there. I'm liking it. Okay. I think I need to see if I have another book page that I've painted on with some acrylic paint. Okay, I like it. Clean my brush out. Oh, Julie and Suzanne got some junk bugs. <laughs> hey, Sheila. Welcome, welcome. All right, let's dry this. Slide this up here out of the way. All right, let's me... I'm going to one-hand it over here, look through my stuff, because I thought that I had painted a bunch of papers... Aha, I found them the other day. So I've got a few more papers here. All 
I want this to be really dry and I think what I'm going to do is scan a copy of it and then I want to take one of these um, other book pages and I think grab some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist and spray it to give it a pink hue because I think a, a little pop of pink coming from behind you know if we did a little bit of that commercial interruption okay I think this is dry so I'm gonna set it aside for a moment get my spray box put on a glove so I don't end up with paint all over my fingers oh did you see my little fingernails I already got my hands dirty they're got a little silver on them okay So I've got Crescendo, Crescendo, and Musical Botanica. They're kind of purpley pinks. So I'm going to shake these up and spray these. I kind of like that color. Mixing them together. I'm going to add a little bit more of the pink. And then let's dry this. I'm going to go ahead and go to my scanner and scare this in. Yes, I am live every week right now. Trying to decide if I want to put another layer on that. All right, I'm gonna let that dry for a minute, so you, I'll give you something pretty to look at. So here are some other pages that I made while I scan this one, because I want to keep it. I want to keep a copy of it. <laughs> Having my printer in here makes it a little bit better because it's closer. If I could, ideally, I'd like to have it back here once I get some uh, toner put into it. But then I couldn't open my cabinet, so I'd have to move it over here. And I was like, then I'd have to move this thing. And I'm like, ah, I can't figure out what I want to do. <laughs> And then there's that yellow. You like it? You like it? All right, so I'm going to try this some more. Oh, that's gotten a, getting a pretty color. Pretty colors. Okay. Get that to dry a little. Let it drip some. Okay. That's probably almost enough. I think this would look really good behind that pink to give us a nice little border. You like it? Okay. Set this aside. Dump out some of that water so I don't end up spilling it on everything. All right. So I thought I would show this is a oversized postcard. In my case, they're usually 6 by 11 in size. I was trying to get another one out. So they're usually just a little bit longer. I like this cover that I'm making is 
using a six by nine piece. This is cardstock weight. And I think the first thing I want to do is cover this with a book page. And what that'll do is that will cover up the text on here. It'll also give it a little bit more sturdiness because it's thicker. And I think I'm going to do the wrap method where I wrap it. Yeah, I think that's what I want to do. I'll get a little bit of some Fabri-Tac glue and glue this together. Very lovely. Thank you. All right, come on. I don't like some of these bottles. They don't have any grip on the nozzles. So you're sitting here twisting and twisting and twisting and you can't get any uh, traction. <laughs> it's like, ah, annoying. All right, so I'm just going to come in here and glue this. Because it's a slicky paper, sometimes a Lean's Tacky Glue doesn't like to be adhered, so I'll use the Beacon Fabri-Tac Glue. All right, I will put this on here. Get my phone folder. I saw you. And then I find if I bring these corners in, that'll give it a, a nice crisp edge when we fold the other pieces in. Okay. Give me some more glue. I'm using a dictionary page to cover this with. I like using dictionary pages because I don't really have to worry about, you know, a book full of smut <laughs> being across my project that may go to someone that would be easily offended by that. <laughs> All right, so then take the edges and fold those in. Okay, and this one, fold it in. And then glue this down. Poke, poke, nudge, nudge. Y'all get in on the raffle. We're going to give away 200 junk bucks. If you have been following me, you probably have an accumulation of those. You can redeem those for a ten dollar off coupon to my shop and I'm still adding things even though I'm not going to be making the subscription boxes anymore I am going to add some standalone goodie packs if you will that will have things like miscellaneous papers and book pages maybe a stencil if I had some leftovers from one of my other kits, I'll put those in there like charms and that kind of stuff. All right, glue that down and then use the foam folder to smooth it out. Okay. All right, so now I want to place a book page on this side, and I'm thinking that I'll go ahead and just cut it to be the size that I need. I'm gonna close this up, so. So I'm gonna trim here and here. Okay, all of a sudden I just got hot. And then this needs to be I'm going to do just slightly smaller than nine inches 
and then I'll do just slightly narrower than six inches. That way it will come right to the edge, not all the way over the edge of my postcard. Okay. All right, I got to take off my sweatshirt thingy. I'm getting hot. Ugh. Okay. I'm trying to get my apron tied back shut. I want to get, have any of y'all uh, worn or have, I, I don't know, I think I call it like a, a, a pullover smock. You know, it basically has a piece of fabric in the front and a full piece of fabric in the back and it has a hole for your head and the sides are open and you might tie it on the side. And then another one that I saw was, it was like a putting on a button up shirt backwards. If that's the only way I could describe it. So you put your arms through, it had long sleeves, and then the back was open. It overlapped a little bit at the neckline, and then it draped down, so it was open in the back. So I don't know, maybe something I've been looking at, trying to decide which one I want. Okay. So here, we're going to add some blue. To cover our book page. Putting just a little bit on here as well. All right, so now what I'm going to do is lay this down and I'm going to flip it over and then from the back side smooth out that glue to the edges. Yeah, like a painting smock. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not a Snuggie. No, I don't want a Snuggie. <laughs> I, I want something that while I'm painting, you know, it keeps me from getting paint splatters on my clothing, extending the life of my clothing. <laughs> um, and if you need to be warm, you could be warm. I could do a short sleeve or a long sleeve one. It just kind of depends on which way you like it. Okay, so there is covering that postcard. Not, not even, I saw some different kinds on, um, Amazon. So I'm still trying to decide which one I want. All right. So I've got, whoopsie, about to make a mess. I've got my, uh, scoring tool and my, I use my cutting mat to score. If you have a scoreboard and you like using it, be my guest. I'm going to lay this at the four and a half inch mark and gently, because it is a book page, I may even use my bone folder, score this. And I will go ahead and flip it over and score it on the other side too. It just helps it bend a little better in my opinion. Okay. So now I just want to take this. Do I want? Yeah, we'll do this on the inside. And I'm just going to line this up and burnish that edge. All right, so now I've got this piece, and I am pretty sure that I want to use a piece of this and a little piece of that on here. So what color should I make this background? Probably yellow. Shouldn't it be yellow? So you have the pink and the yellow here. I have fossilized amber. Let's see if that's too yellow. I think that would be a good color to go with that, don't you think? All right, so I'm gonna put my gloves on. So we're getting our mixed media out here. 
mixing all these medias together. Get a all right, so what I want to do right now then is I'm just going to rub this ink pad all over. Okay. You have a vintage crisscross apron. Oh, okay. Gotcha. That's what I want. Like that. A, cr a crisscross. I'll have to look. To see if I can find one that fits my needs. All right, so then from the Tattered Angels musical Botanica, I've got this Cantana. Cantana. It's kind of a a, mm, a light walnut stain. It's going to activate the um distress oxide ink and it kind of gives a little bit of a vintage look and i think i'll go ahead and do the inside as well and then spritz that All right, let's get this dry. My paper wrinkled a little bit. I'm not worried about it yet. You wear your PJs for messy crafting? <laughs> well, I guess I could do that. <laughs> ah, wear crummy clothes, don't care. <laughs> Sometimes I'm out in public, so teaching people how to do stuff. <laughs> okay, I think I like the way that's coming together. Still a little damp. I think it looks good though. All right, set that over here. I'm thinking I may want to stamp over this. Should we stamp the little daisy flower all around the perimeter of this? And then that way you'll see it peeking underneath the other layers? I think so. Okay. Oh, let's do the raffle. You got a minute. So if I stamp this here and then kind of rotate it. And then we'll go ahead and do this side. There. Oh, sorry you had a call and you missed it. Okay, so now I think I can get away, if I cut this in half, that might be a good size and then I can get two out of it. Oh, thank you so much for your donation. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Cut that. And if we're looking at this, we put this on here. Kind of lay my, so now I've got two of those. Now, do I want to cut this to be maybe three inches. Let's see how this looks. We have three inches and we have a little bit of a pink border. Let's see how much of a pink border we have.
We have about a quarter of an inch of a pink border if we did three inches. I think that'll work. So three inches. And then this piece, I want it to be a little bit shorter. Oops, I almost made a big mess. Than this piece, and it is roughly five and a quarter inches. So if I did four and three quarters of an inch, and laid that on top, and then this would go on here. What do you think? I kind of like that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stack all of these over here. I may not use them today, but they're out of the way. Clean my hands off. And let's pick a winner of 200 junk box. How's that sound? I think what I'll do is glue these together real fast so the glue can be drying. And I want to sew those pieces together. Okay. Okay, let's glue these two back together. Get my glue. That's scraps. glue that in the middle. Smooth that out. I like it. Hey, Connie, welcome. All right, so let's pick a winner of 200 junk bucks. If you haven't gotten in on that, do that right now. Turn that over so you could see it. <laughs> All right, so we used some junk mail and some book pages. So let's pick a winner. All right, the winner of 200 junk bucks is da 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 da. Connie Barge, congratulations, Connie. I'll get that added to your account. All right, go here and go. All righty, we're going to open a giveaway. We're going to give away a $10 off coupon to my shop. All righty. So now I'm going to go, Giovanna, thank you for the little sewing lamb. Uh, we're going to go to the sewing machine, and I just want to stitch around this outside edge. It's just decorative. That's all it is, but I like doing it. <laughs> Trying to get my machine on. I have a regular sewing machine. I have it set up to do a zigzag stitch. I have black thread in the upper and black thread in the lower. My machine I purchased a new in 2014. So I've had it for a little while and I really like it. It has automatic threader and it also has a thread cutter on it so it makes it so easy to use there was a couple of ladies i was noticing online talking about buying a machine and they were not happy with the quality of the machine and i hate to say it but almost any new sewing machine if it's under a hundred dollars it's doubtful that it's a very good machine. And I only know that because in the past, I've purchased a cheaper machine because I wanted another machine. And I've also been with friends who have purchased these under $100 machines. And they ended up getting rid of them because they didn't work very well. So there's a close-up. You see the shimmer on that? Shimmer, shimmer. 
Ah, well, we're glad you're here, Connie. Glad you got here. You got here just in time. <laughs> All right, so then this piece, I was thinking of putting right in the middle of our journal cover. How's that? Let's glue this down. I think if I want to put a saying or just the word journal the word journal may be too big let me see if I already have some stamped here I've got this one yeah I have it in smaller let's see if where I put those there we go I stamp out a lot of the words and I made these little envelopes to put them in it makes it easier when I want one okay, these are just pretty much standard but I could put another piece of paper right behind the word journal and it's small enough I think it looks good in that corner I saw a piece of a teal paper over here. Let me see where I saw that. I've got this little piece. Maybe on this side. To make that stand out just a little bit. Yeah, I think that's what it needs right there. I'm going to glue this to this blue. It looks like this is where I was brayering color off of my brayer. And I just did it on a book page and then I used those pieces to make layers with. I think that'll look good. Let's add some distress inks to it. I think that would look really good right there. I have a kind of a wadded up doily here. And I'm thinking of just taking a piece of this. Just having it peek out from behind. I don't know. It's kind of hiding here. Let's see if what happens if we add some distress inks to it. You know, sometimes you have to audition pieces of paper and ideas, and you don't have to glue it down right away. You can just lay it on there and see if that makes a difference. All right. I think something like that in the corner. It doesn't stand out very much, but it's there. I wonder if I put a piece of white paper, if you can see things a little better. Okay, I think that's what I'm going to do. Just put that right there and glue that down. So I'll put a little glue on here. Put a little glue on the back side of this guy. And something like that make sure I got enough glue on it and adhere it down that almost looks like a store-bought paper doesn't it I like it yay okay that looks pretty good all right so let's pick some pages for the inside, I've got some book pages, I've got some
copy weight paper. Try to see what else I have here. Oh, I've got a uh, coffee dyed. So one, two. I don't think we need that many. One, two, three, four, five. That would be a good variety inside the journal. All right, so I'm just going to take these. Let's start. I think I want this in the middle, so I'm going to fold this in. And that's going to be the middle. And then let's do... Let's do the book, the sheet music. Yeah, sheet music. I'll put that next. And then we'll do this purple paper. Have fun, Julie. Thanks for stopping in. Maybe you'll come back before we're done. All right, and then I've got some copy dye paper. I have abundance of scrapbook paper, so I just grabbed a few sheets and cut it up. So that I can use some of it. If you don't have scrapbook paper, continue to use your book pages, copy paper, junk mail, whatever you like. All right. So that'll be the center. And then here's what our pages will look like. So if I put this in here, and then I'll get my book binding tools and get a hold of my tools all right a little template i've got some little clips here I'm trying to make sure i've got it right side up yes okay get my all and a needle so I just have a little three hole pamphlet template that I have here. Basically, I just took a piece of paper about the size of whatever journal I was working on. In this case, it's the five and three quarters inch. And I just fold it in half and poke a hole. And then I kind of either fold it over and poke a hole so that it's equal distance or I measure it and then poke them both at the same time in my template. And then when I go to my journal, I V up the book cover and then punch down through all those layers to the outside. Put away the template for another day. And then one, two, three times the height of your journal, at least is what you want for binding it with wax linen thread. Get that over here out of the way. Okay. So now I'm just going to poke that through the middle and then come up to the top. And then go back down through the middle and then come through the bottom hole to the inside. And we're going to slip that under the first stitch here. And we're going to make sure there's not any slack and there isn't. Put my needle back into my zipper case. Okay. And let's tie this off. <laughs> All right. And then I'm just going to cut these. If you want to add some embellishment later, we can. And then we've got this little book that we've made. So it's got pages that you can write on or collage upon. You could always add more papers to it by gluing them on the pages and adding pockets. But I think this makes it a nice size to work with. Let's stamp this. Try to find my little block. This journal made by, let's see if this shows up on here. Oh, 
Um, I think so, Connie. If not, I'll put it in the description box. I get it off of Amazon. That's good enough. Enough that I can see it to sign. All right. And this is 12 for 2023. All right, I made one. I like it. Awesome blossom. Okay, so now I want to make, I'm going to clean my hands. I have these papers here that I've had for a while. I haven't even measured them to see what they are. Ah, perfect. Thank you, Robin. <coughs> Pardon me. These are four inches wide by five inches tall. And it's got this random paper on the one side, a stripe, and it's got a little floral on the inside. So I'm thinking, what if I make this the outside and glue a book page to it? And then that will be the inside. So, if I have a book page, I can use. I think what I'll do is just glue this side by side. And then I will cut the paper off of it. So, yeah. First, I think I'm going to use some distressing ink. Thank you so much, Barbara. Lose a little distressing. I think these were um, from Canvas Corp brand. They were testing different types of paper and they were trying to make sure they got the images lined up front and back and then some of them didn't work very well and then they just cut it up into little pieces so you could use it somewhere else. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get some beacon. I'm trying to decide if I need a thicker piece of paper than this. Hmm. Wait, before I do that, I think I'm going to do this. And then that way, because I have another piece of paper here, in theory, it should be stronger, right? So I'm just going to glue this down. Right somewhat in the middle. All right, so now I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac glue and glue this down. And then we'll glue this one right next to it. <laughs> Yay, bucks, 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 bucks. <laughs> oh. All right. I rotated it because it's the same image. I just want it to be a little different. If you're looking at the back, I'm putting a little bit of a gap here and then we'll smooth it out. All right, now I'm going to use my paper cutter and trim this off. Is 
work so much better. Because my luck, I would pre-cut it and it wouldn't fit. I would probably make it too small and then I would be annoyed. So by doing it this way, I know it fits. <laughs> okay. Save the scraps for another day. All right, so now we'll have that be the outside. And that'll be the inside of our journal cover. So what do we want to put on this outside? Mm -hmm. Oh, I've got this little piece already cut. Maybe we'll use another piece to layer behind it a little bit. Or we could just make that outer area. What color? Should we make it blue? Like the flowers? Or purple? Hmm. I'm going to put my gloves on and decide what color. Okay. Purple or blue? Let's put this on here. Rob is gone. Everybody get in trouble. You know, I have Salty Ocean and Dusty Concord. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of put a little bit all over. Okay. And then I'm going to add a little bit of this purple. Maybe a little darker than I wanted to go, but I, it'll be all right. We're, we're going to make it work. This is a Dante. It's kind of an ivory color. It has a pearl, lesset green kind of shimmer to it. It's from the Musical Botanica kit. I'm trying to get that mica powder in it. I hadn't used it in a few days, so it hasn't been shook. And we'll spritz this. So it adds a little bit of a gold shimmer to that. And then we'll dry it. I'm thinking I need a darker frame to go behind that possibly. I've got this piece that we could cut a little frame. I'm thinking that's what I'll do. All right, let's move this out of the way. So these, again, were four by five inches. I don't know if I want to keep the torn part of this. And we could also use the color variation in that by doing it this way. So you get a little bit of the different blues. I'm going to take this and come over here and cut it right about there. Let's see if that's too big. So that's right at four inches. That's too big. If I come back, let's go this way. I want a narrower. So if we come to three and a half inches, I think what I need to do is trim this off. 
that's going to be three inches now. So now if I do this at three and a half inches, that's going to have a little better look to it. And then I'll just cut off the excess off the bottom here. That's four and a half inches. Okay. All righty. So these are one of the papers I made last week. I kind of like that with the variety of color. All right, let's cut. No, let's add some distress inks. And then we got to look at what kind of paper we can put inside. I've got some strips of paper behind me that I think I can make work that I cut a long time ago. All right, so we've got different mediums that we used on the cover. And then if we put this piece on top, should we stitch it? Let's glue it first and then look at it and see if we want to stitch it. All right. All right, so we've got two journal covers that are just about complete and then I'll get some elements to put for the inside. All right, should I stitch it? Y'all can let me know while I grab some papers from behind me. I've got these papers from a while back of cutting up papers to make journals out of. And my thought was these would be a little bit shorter than the cover. All right. I see votes for stitching. Let that dry for a moment while I figure out this part. All right. So that makes this eight inches. So if we cut this at seven and three quarters of an inch, That'll give us a little leeway inside our cover when we fold these in half. If I did this right. Yeah. Okay. And then I have, ooh, maybe we should make a little journal. Maybe an even smaller journal. All right. So I'm going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch. Oh, sewing lamb. You did a nosedive. Sewing lamb. Bah. We're going to stitch around this piece here and then we'll glue it together. <laughs> I'm waiting on the camera. Come on, camera. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. Okay. Let's stitch around here. I hope I got enough thread. Yeah, it looks like I have some thread. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about what I'm doing and I was trying to figure out what to say to y'all. <laughs> you know, I kind of like mixing the watercolor papers with 
in this case, this back piece is actually either a gel print or when I was cleaning off my brayer. And so we're mixing that together and then we're mixing in the Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist and the Distress Oxide. So we're getting a variety of things going on. And I think I'm going to put this where the dragon, this dragonfly is going up and that one's going down because I don't know. I think that looks better to me. So I'm going to put that right in the middle here. And then I guess we'll find another sentiment or something. How about don't forget to fly? I know I saw that in my little folder thing. And if I hurry, we can make one more little journal out of something. All right, let's look at my little words. Don't forget to fly. How about that? Now, does it need another piece of paper behind it? Or do you think it looks okay right there on top? I think... Try to decide. I've got. I see this blue strip that was from painting papers. If we put that, oh, I think that makes it look good by adding that extra layer. So let's glue that together. We'll cut that. You'll know, save those pieces that you cut off the edges of your papers, and you'd be surprised how you can use them. I am a little laxed at the moment, but normally what I do when I clean off my desk is I have these scrap bins that I put scraps in by color. That way, when I need a scrap, I can go back to that bin and get out whatever color that I'm looking for for my project. But I haven't done that in a little while, and I've got Ziploc baggies here and there that I need to do something with. Okay, I like the way that turned out. So let's fold these papers to put in our journal. And get our paper binding tools before I stitch the pages in so it's a little bit easier I'll stamp it without the pages in okay and I'm gonna hit that with my heat tool because it's kind of a shiny paper while I grab my pen And I'll go ahead and sign it. That way I know when it was made. It's kind of fun to go through your stuff and you find stuff that you made many, many, many years ago. And sometimes I'm like, who made this? That's really neat. And then I flip it over and I made that. Wow! <laughs> Is that too long? It might work. All right, so I'm going to put my book pages in the middle. Or, yeah, journal pages, I guess, not book pages. Get that all lined up. Get my template. And punch the holes. Right in the middle. Edge, edge. Mm -hmm. Make sure that pick is put away so you don't stab yourself. One, two, three. 
and then we'll do another three hole pamphlet stitch. If I can see, there we go. And then come around. I think these little journals are kind of fun. Um, you know, just basically look at what you have laying on your desk and can I turn that into a journal? That's just what I did. Come on, where's the hole? Okay, there we go. I couldn't see it on this side. Make sure it's tight and there's no gaps. Tie it off. All righty. Another journal made. I didn't put a tie on these. Maybe we'll figure something out here. But I think that's pretty cute. All right, let's see what I have laying here that would work for one more journal. But I want it to be smaller. So I'm going to take these pieces of paper and fold them in half and measure that. So we're looking at three and a quarter by two inches just for the pages. And I don't think maybe it is that same cardstock would work oh it will cool so i have this cardstock here that's laying here that's kind of vintagey looking let's glue another book page on it i even have a piece of sheet music hymnal that we can put on one side because I don't really care for that so I'm thinking gluing the book page to one side and then putting the sheet page sheet music on the other side and then we'll decorate on top of that just another mini done just like that da 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 <laughs> all right I'm gonna glue this piece down So I'm doing it a little bit differently this time. I'm making my cover based off of something that I had laying on my desk here. And then we'll decorate it. Okay. Now I like all the minis I made. I don't want to give any of them away. <laughs> Jennifer was saying how she's made journals. She tells people she's made journals, but she didn't have any journals to show to anybody because she gives them all away. <laughs> so I understand that. I go through stages where I don't have any journals I've made for a while and then I start making some again. All right, so that's this side. And I think, yep, we'll just glue that to this side. Put the glue down. Don't lose the glue. I'm trying to hurry to get this one done. So we can at least have three journals made. Okay, I'm just kind of looking at this. All right. I'm just lining it up with this edge so I only have to cut three sides instead of all four. Get rid of the scrappies. All right, let's cut off the excess here. It's difficult to see this time. There we go. I should have inked the edges before I 
glued the other side on. Tis the season for giving. Oh, that's what you say. <laughs> give, give, give. That's all it is, y'all. Give, give, give. <laughs> all right, let's add some distress inks to this. So here's some vintage -y cover start of a look. All right, so let's look at this. Do I want the music on the outside or do I want the book page on the outside? And let's see what we have here. Some of my papers that I made a while back. We made one today and then this was from a paper from last week I had this one with the roses I'm kind of thinking maybe doing the sheet music on the front but if we do this corner we get a nice little, I, when I basically what I'm doing is I'm putting my hand over the image to kind of see how does that look? Would that give me a nice little something to put on my journal cover? And I think that would. So we're going to cut. I need it to be probably two inches wide. So, and how tall? Three and a half inches tall. So two inches wide and three and a half inches tall. Is that what I said? Let's try that. Let's see how that looks as a little bit on there. And maybe we find a different word that we can put on here. Let's see. I've got this little blue piece. Let's add some distress inks to it. Okay. Put that right there. Okay, and if we put this here, I think that looks pretty good. I'm trying to decide. I'm just going to put a little clippy on there for a moment. <laughs> what do I have here? I've got... Do we want to do memories? It's bigger than, so I'm trying to decide if I should go with something smaller. I've got these, let's see what they are. Create magic. Or choose joy. Do you see any of those? Which one do you think? Put this back in here. And I was thinking just using this little blue piece again. I'll trim it just a little bit smaller to fit on there. I think that's what we'll do is create magic. All right, so let's glue these together. And get that lined up with the edge and then I'll trim it so all these little scraps come in handy okay and then we'll add some distress inks you like the create magic okay good 
Well, I'm glad you did because I chose it. <laughs> I think that looks pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and glue this together. I don't think we need stitches on this one. We'll just go ahead and insert our journal pages. And maybe get off here a little bit early. Oh, I meant to turn this the other way. That's what I like about Aline's tacky glue. If you notice something right away, you can make a change. Okay. And then this piece will go right there. All right, put this away where it belongs. Now I need my little clippies and put these in here. The cover's a little bit bigger than my page inside, but I think it's okay. Get my fun foam. Well, I don't think I have an itty bitty template. So I'm just kind of going to use one I already have. So that'll be the center. Let's see. Oh, right there. All right, so I kind of just made a template. And I'm going to move these out just a little bit. I'm just kind of eyeballing where the center is. And then I'll poke in the center and then a little bit from the edge and do another three hole pamphlet stitch. All right, let's do three times the height one. Two, three, trim. There's the needle. I knew I had a needle out. I just didn't know where it went. Try to put my things away where they belong. Okay. Thread it. I like it. I like it a lot. I thought these were kind of fun, just mixed media, maybe a little bit different than what some people think. It's not all about just making something abstract. We can mix media with different types of papers and rubber stamps and watercolor paints, acrylic paints, distress oxide inks, powdered angels glimmer mist. We have lots of options. Okay, that looks pretty good. Tie it off. It's so cute and tiny. This would be something that uh, this little journal, you could put in your pocket and carry it around for a day and write about things you saw or what you're thankful for on this day. And then you could stick this inside your bigger journal. That's what I thought was kind of a, a cute idea to do. And since these are all popping open, I'm going to see if I can find something. Oh, I've got this blue ribbon here I can use. This ribbon, I don't like it. I don't know where it came from, but I've had it forever. So I am just going to use it. I'm going to slip it right up underneath the tie. Well, I said I was. I can't get my, there we go, had to get it unfolded. Oh, and I didn't stamp it, did I? I got to stamp it, even as little as it is. <laughs> this journal made by, and I may need to use a sharpie this time, let's see if I've got one. Oh, 
Well, I guess I need to buy more Sharpies. <clears throat> All right. And this is 12.04 of 2023. All right, so let's tie this shut. That'll be cute. It's just a simple ribbon. I'll make it a little long in case I want to use it somewhere else. But I think that's kind of cute. And then let's do another one over here. Come on. There it goes. Might as well use this up. It's lying here on my desk. <laughs> Tie this up. Making little bows. Trim that off. So there's two, and then we can do this one. You like it? Okay, good. It's a dark, dark navy blue. It's really dark. It's almost black. And there, I've used some of it. I think I may use some on my other journals that I have laying here. This one I didn't make as long, but... I think it'll be all right. So that's what I made today was these three journals. And then I made these journals just kind of as a, this is where I just use watercolor paper and stamp directly on the watercolor paper and then watercolored it. I did use the mask and then I watercolored the background with a gray color. I thought that turned out pretty cool. And then I think I talked about this one. This was a couple of just scraps of paper that were laying on my desk and I joined them together. This was a book page that I painted with the distress oxide and then sprayed it with some tattered angels. Or no, that time I took a wet paintbrush and just went over it. And this is called the flax rubber stamp and I cut it up. So this is actually on the top part of it and I cut that off. And I can use this somewhere else in a different journal or something. And then this one, I used my watercolor um, pieces that I've made on other videos with y'all on here. And I thought those turned out pretty cool as well. All right, well, let's pick the winner of the $10 off coupon. Thank you, Ada. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, the winner of the $10 off coupon is da, 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 da. Julie Parker. You want another coupon? I think she's gone, so we'll get that to her. <laughs> All righty, y'all. Well, I think I'm going to get off here and I'm going to have some dinner with my hubby. I can get some ribbon for that one and uh, make some more journals and whatnot. I hope y'all had fun today. I hope you liked seeing, I don't know, just ideas on doing a mixed media journal. I don't know that this one needs a tie on it, but I think this one does. Um, if you would leave a comment below after this video is over with. Yes, you got another one. Um, let me know what you liked about today. And if you have ideas that you would like to see or hey how do you do something let me know and i will see if i already have a tutorial or i will make a new one for you because i have a lot of tutorials here on youtube and um, what else i think uh, i don't know what we're going to do next week maybe some more of this kind of stuff because i kind of like making the little journals and making little things to go in the bigger journals 
I don't know. I hope you like this. No, I have not sent the boxes yet because I didn't get my stuff until late Friday. I got it all put together and we'll ship out tomorrow and the next day. So, if there was something that you wanted, um, let me know. If it's a rubber stamp, it'll have to wait because I don't have a sheet unless it's one I already have, like Beeline Designs or something. Or if you want some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist or stencils, I have those made. All right, let's go over here. Thank you all for being here today. I hope you enjoyed this. And I know I had fun just making some things. And I hope that you find some inspiration in this so that you can be creative. Thank you for hanging out. <laughs> you already placed another order already. <laughs> Truly, you crack me up. Um, thank you all for hanging out with me and just keeping me company while I create. Y'all have an amazing day. Do something fun. Do something creative. And do something kind for someone else in this world. Because you never know what they're going through. And maybe your little bit of kindness will tip them over the edge to make their day so much better. All right. Y'all take care. Uh, Y'all have an amazing week. Lots of love to each and every one of you. Bye, everybody.